it was such a nice experience um, uh, to witness an audience where people talk about their topics with spark in their eyes. Um, I definitely really, really enjoyed this. Um, but for now, uh, we're coming to a close. Um, and for this, uh, may I please invite with me to this day's, uh, stage for a wrap up, uh, Lucas Ilves, uh, the government CIO, please. If I could sing, this would have been the part uh, where I would have sung. Um, so, I mean, we're coming to a close. It's, uh, it's day two. Uh, it's been amazing. It's been impressive. It's been agile. Can I say it was agile? Uh, it was definitely something else. Um, just, you know, wow. Uh, so let's start from day one. And I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Jump in. Give me your thoughts. Um, so our prime minister started with saying that, you know, the time uh, or the era of dependencies such as we have had with Russia um, is coming to a close. Uh, it's coming to an end, just like this uh, event. Um, and we have this trusted connectivity, which is a new era of uh, trusted partnerships. Uh, Global Gateway is the European example of it. And our minister said that Tallinn Digital Summit was a perfect platform to kick this off. Uh, but what should be next? I mean, theoretically, we now agree. What should we do next? Yeah. So, so two things. I mean, I think the first point is just a conceptual one, which is for many of us, the first na natural reaction when faced with shocks and faced with sort of challenges from the outside is to close ourselves off. We remember th two and a half years ago, COVID, the first thing we did is we all closed our borders. But what COVID also taught us is that successfully coming out of the crisis actually relied upon opening up again and opening up and becoming mutually inter interdependent in new ways. So that means the collaboration we had between Europe and the US on vaccines, the vaccine passport, just the data sharing that we had to understand what was happening and think about effective public health strategies. And I think we've seen the same thing in the complex energy politics and geopolitics with Russia that we're now involved in, which is on the one hand, certain dependencies have proven to be unreliable, but the solutions to these challenges are also coming from collaboration, whether that's specifically in energy, where our ability to winter this winter and the winters to come is going to be because of trusted partners um, inside and outside of Europe, or whether that is in you know, every other element of geopolitics from weapons deliveries to diplomat diplomatic collaboration. And so I think what we've, what we've learned is that um, the, the nature of who is at the other, and other end of the connection whether they're a trusted partner to belabor this point a little bit to the point of making it almost a pun, um, really matters. And so the, the answer to these challenges is to deepen our relationships, but to deepen our relationships in certain directions. And, and that, was, yeah. that was the general yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. I want to give you the specific no, answer sure. that's more Go digital ahead. specific, yeah. right? Because you know, we, we've been using the opportunity as Estonia to, to have a lot of conversations here with partners from everywhere around the world about how we work closer together. And, and one, of the, one of the challenges that Estonia has always had, and I'm going to be super frank about this, has always been we're a tiny country. And so we can't collaborate with 100 other countries on a bilateral basis. You know, we have relations with 100 plus countries on a bilateral basis, but actual serious brass tacks, we deliver something collaboration. There just aren't that many Estonians around. Most of them are in this room, you know, actually Tallinn's a Potemkin city, I'm kidding. Um, but there are only 1.3 million of us and they don't all work for the government and tech companies. Um, and so from our perspective, what's really important is that the actual collaborations occur on a mini or a multilateral basis, that we actually find ways to have more of us around the room working on projects together. So in the digital sphere, whether that's how we do our, you know, our cybersecurity information sharing, whether that's the next stages of digital infrastructure that we're building, uh, we want to do it, common products, common services, groups of countries, and the private sector in the room. I mean, one of the big things that the private sector brings to the table is that they operate across borders. And so whether that's big multinationals, you know, Amazon and, and Microsoft and Nokia, um, or whether that's also small startups that can quite agilely, especially in the way that work is happening now, be based in Estonia, pursuing projects in Singapore, Rwanda, Chile, et cetera, those, you know, they often can bridge us together in a way that governmental relations can't. And so to, to tie these two things together, the kind of the prime ministers and foreign ministers meeting and talking about big important ideas and, and practical 
practical projects, we have this forest of initiatives out there. Frankly, I think one of the, the practical problems we all face is we have too many meetings to go to, uh, too many uh, formats, G7, G20, OECD, uh, EU, just to name the big ones that have organizations behind them, never mind all of these things that we're constantly inventing. And one of the things, by the way, we keep on doing is we have a little group of countries that comes together, invents a cool format. Uh, we had one of these, for instance, in digital called the Digital Nations, or we have one. And then there are some other countries that are also very capable, and they're not part of that group, and so they invent another format. And then suddenly we have three or four formats dealing with the same topic. So I think um, the operational challenge we have is that the, the will to do these things is there, the business case is there, and we, I think, need to be impatient in terms of delivery. And that's, I think, the, the effect that Ukraine has had on us, is that we have become, in a good way, impatient about delivery and wanting to actually see results from, from our interactions and, and from our projects. Talking about being impatient, and actually this brings back to, to one of the worrying points I have, is, uh, and this was not discussed here today, I don't know if intentionally or not, it took a lot of time, this time, to agree on a common data sharing agreement between the EU and US. I think it was just announced a couple of weeks ago. Um, the negotiations for it went for over a year, definitely even longer. And I mean, US should be our trusted partner. But, you know, we saw in, in practice how actually this takes time. Um, and though we were impatient with this. How can we fix this? I mean, the idea of digital sovereignty actually does not help along with this. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Shit, I didn't expect that question. I'm so sorry. No, this is I good. didn't have this in my notes. I just. Uh... It's a really, you, you know, how, how we spe fix the specific question of how we speed up EU US data collaboration agreements, that's a tough one. Um, I think. If we would have had an answer to this, we would have fixed this earlier. Exactly. So. I, I think part of it, though, um, is actually getting both, you know, something we've done within Europe is we're so used to having these legislative processes where everyone is peering into each other's kitchen cupboard. You know, as an Estonian, I understand domestic legislation in Germany, and some Germans even understand domestic legislation in Estonia because we have to make laws for ourselves together. And the challenge with EU-US collaboration on data sharing or some of the other regulatory aspects is that both systems are not used to actually sort of assuming, the, assuming benign intent and the best possible version of what's going on in the other country. So, you know, Europe looks suspiciously at what the underlying intent of US rules is and, and vice versa. Um, whether that's because of concern over the security state or, or concern about, uh, you know, economic interests. When in reality, the regulators and the legislators are trying to achieve the same thing on, on both sides. So I think it's, it's this kind of common empathy that we need to develop. I think on data sharing in particular, one of the challenges has been to bring U.S. legislators out of this mindset of legislating for the U.S. only um, and, and having sort of, uh, you know, first and foremost bearing in mind U.S. government data access and not considering as equivalently legitimate the concerns that Europeans have. But the flip side has also been um, getting very paranoid European lawyers and, and privacy advocates to not have the least charitable view of what U.S. intent around their own legislation is. And I think that in the context of data sharing, we're actually we're doing that. And I guess my hope would be that the more we do this, the easier it gets, right? Um, and, and that's, I think, the challenge we have is that there's a muscle around trusted connectivity that gets stronger when we exercise it. And, and this is, you know, what we've seen in a European context, what we've seen in a regional context, is the first practical collaboration is hard, and the next ones become successively easier. And the, mecha and the, and the mechanisms of trust are there, and they, and they get better and deeper. No, for sure, for sure. I, I fully agree. And uh, what, you know, I, I took from what you said right now is also something that was mentioned, I don't remember if this was yesterday or today or on the stage that, I think it was uh, today, it was Cecilia, that our regulatory strength should not become a burden on us in the EU, right? So we have to get some things right, and then we can foster better those trusted uh, partnerships. As is with the AI regulation, which is something we, you know, went into um, uh, yesterday. And, and the US has said that if the EU gets the AI regulation right, they might just adopt this uh, for the first time ever. I mean, what do you think about this? Uh, is it in reality possi possible that the, after GDPR, there will be next standards from the EU when it comes to regulation, and perhaps this could be AI? Well, um Canada, oh, sorry, California effectively adopted uh, the GDPR uh, with some tweaks and some changes. 
Um, and I think that sort of that kind of convergence on legislation absolutely can happen is a good thing. But I think now we're getting into the realm of metaphysics. And the point I'd make is that metaphysics are better discussed over a drink. We'll soon get there. And, and before we do, because yesterday a prime minister said she was between us and the foods. Now we're between you and the drinks. Um, so it's called Tallinn Digital Summit. Um, what we discussed here, what several uh, participants said on stage, you know, we thought we're going to come here, we're going to discuss digitalization only, and it turns out we talk infrastructure, we talk energy, we talk security. So what should it be called next year? Are we going to go for Tallinn Connectivity Summit, or do you have something else in mind? Well, as a government CIO, I've got to stand strong for digital. After all, everything is digital, whether we're talking about energy or telecommunications. Um, Let's get back to that question. But, okay. what, but, but, but I think that maybe the point to conclude on what we hope to continue doing is, is we hope that uh, this convening here in Tallinn is a place where we can have that meta discussion, where we can for a moment pull ourselves out of the specific regional, the specific topic formats we're in, and see those horizontal linkages, um, and then go back home and go into the sort of the various processes we have with new energy for how we converge and bring those agendas together. And I think the, the thought process that we ask you all to engage in on your flights home, and, and for those of you who are based in Thailand, maybe your walks or your bolt rides home, um, is what is the functional role that this summit here and that Estonia can play to keep some of this interdisciplinary and this interdomain energy going? Because I think we very much see that the value in this convening and these types of convenings is there, in spite of the fact that we have too many formats uh, in the world altogether, um, and that we need to continue with these discussions. And your very concrete reactions on, and reflections on where we can actually help raise these topics, what we can push, um, will help us in, in our actions in the next weeks and the months. I know I have a pretty long to-do list that's come out of the meetings I've had over the last two days that we're hopefully going to set into action. Uh, I hope that you're also leaving with rich to-do lists. One thing is for sure, it's not going to be called the Tallinn Meta Summit. Okay, but uh, really, I mean, uh, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for this wrap-up. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming to the Tallinn uh, Digital Summit, the fifth version of it. Um, I hope there's going to be a sixth, potentially with a new name, but we'll see. Thank you so much, Lucas. It's been an honor being your master of ceremony for these past two days. And now let's go have a drink. Thank you. Woo!